Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're having good luck so far in the 2v2 CRL challenge. Just in case you're not one, to quickly let you guys know, I'll be doing a $100 giveaway today, $50 on Discord, five winners, and $50 on Twitter, five winners, to help you guys out if you need some additional gems. Be sure to check out the links in the pinned comment below. Guys, enjoy this video. It's going to be a good one. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Hope this video finds you guys doing well today. Today we're going to talk about Golem. Now I shared a Golem video with you guys, I don't know, like a week ago with Flobby on the line. That was all about Flobby and pro plays. Today I kind of stumbled upon a Golem deck that actually works better than both of the Flobby decks that I shared with you guys last week. So I figured I'd do kind of an update to the video. Now a quick disclaimer that you should probably go with Flobby's decks if you have any skill at all in this game. If you're like me and you consider yourself maybe, I don't know, an average to slightly above average player, maybe you just like a very low skill cap deck, and that's what I think this Golem deck is. That's the difference between these decks and the Flobby episode. By the way, I'll link the Flobby episode for you guys as well. So this is the deck, guys, and the reason I'm saying it's low skill cap here is, number one, it has Cannon Cart, which is like really, really strong in the meta, but more importantly than that, it has the Flobby decks, one deck has had pump and the other deck had poison right so one deck had the spell one deck had the pump this deck has them both and i generally find decks uh, especially beat down decks that have pump and a big spell and a small spell just really easy to use. I mean, there's not that many ways you can mess this up. You're trying to execute and build up an elixir advantage and then a big monster push when it comes to double elixir time or when you have the elixir advantage in the first two minutes. So that's basically all she wrote. That's the whole deck, guys. If you guys don't have Night Witch or she's not leveled up enough for you guys, feel free to go ahead and sub in either. I like having something that can target air even in a little, little way there with the bats on the witch. So I would probably go Go ahead and sub in a regular witch but if you want to go non-air you can easily just sub in the lumberjack in that spot as well or the mini pekka it will give you an extra element an extra layer of protection for your pump when you're pumping up in the early game so guys what i want to do here is i'm you know not incredibly high but decently high at 61 42 i want to go ahead and start out with a live match here and then we'll kind of play things by ear after that and see how we do so it looks like we're going against uh flu flu right flow right and he gives me the oops right off the bat man ah! <laughs> how about that how about a little bit of that for you huh we're just gonna pump up here because we have absolutely uh nothing to really go against this hog rider now obviously not the ideal opening here but luckily the hog won't get you know a ton of damage and with the fireball we now have the elixir lead so we can go ahead and drop a uh, golem here what we're gonna do here is i could have zapped right there but instead I'm actually going to go opposite lane. I'm basically going to give him this tower early on. I kind of got in an uh, unfortunate situation early on there. I'm not even going to use my zap because I really want to execute a big, big push here. He used his spell, but we're going to Night Witch early on. He's cycling to another fireball, obviously, here, guys. So we're going to wait until he makes the next move here. He's going to go ahead and drop that uh, cannon down. I'm going to wait till I have a little bit more elixir, and then we're going to go ahead and drop down this poison, and hopefully, okay, that was a beautiful fireball on his part. He's actually going, we're probably not going to get much damage, if any, here, guys, and we don't. So that was unfortunate, but I am going to go ahead and, uh, and just chill for now. I'm going to give him the right tower. Again, kind of an unfortunate start to this match here, but we're going to pump up again since he doesn't have fireball and cycle, and... What we're going to try to do here is he has no way to punish me at all right now, right? He doesn't have his hog. He doesn't have a fireball. He could, like, musketeer in the pocket or something like that. But really, he has no good solution. So what I'm going to do is try to execute just a mammoth, mammoth push. He'll probably try to cycle me here and hit me really, really hard in the left lane. But we're going to go ahead and try to defend that, uh, mildly defend that. We want the golem to basically take the most of this damage. He's spending a ton of elixir right now just cycling. So we're just going to baby dragon help out against these skeletons and if i don't get this tower down well i'm in big trouble here <laughs> so what we want to do here guys is uh get ready for this musky i do want to must i do want to go ahead and quickly 
get that in there, get this in there. We're just going to absolutely put the pressure on here, guys. I am going to go ahead and zap that musketeer up. I don't want to take too much damage, and we're definitely going to get this left tower down, even with that fireball. Look at that, how we really didn't panic early on, and what I'm going to do now is it's an interesting kind of moment in this match where I could go kind of all in on that king tower, but I'm just going to go ahead and decide to pump up instead because he has the musketeer in the right lane. I kind of want to see what he's going to do here. He's going to actually log cycle. I'm going to go ahead and he's going to get ready to, okay, we're just going to cannon cart in the left here. We're going to zap this all up. This buys a little bit extra time for that cannon cart. And then we're going to get this, oh, okay. <laughs> Serves you right for BMing me, dude. We would have had it either way. I feel pretty confident about this match because even though he's playing a hog cycle deck, which generally has a little bit of an edge, uh, he's actually able to cycle all the way back to another fireball, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, against golem decks, I think that this, or excuse me, against hog decks, where generally uh, we'll give him the well played and we'll give him a little bit of heat, give him a little bit of heat. Generally with these decks, even if he hadn't thrown away that fireball, I felt like we were in a pretty, uh, as soon as we pumped up when he had no fireball to punish us, I felt like we were in a really good spot there. As long as you don't kind of panic, you're, it's okay to take some damage. As you saw, I could have actually used the cannon cart to defend against that very first hog rider, but I, I like to kind of err on the side of not losing the tower, but trying to pull a, a positive elixir trade or at least kind of mitigate them getting a huge elixir advantage. So not overdoing it on defense. Let's go ahead. Let's see where we are. We're 5274. Not too bad. I want to show a replay play and then I will show against this guy who is really really good he's playing a balloon a giant balloon freeze deck which is actually a little bit of annoying to go against uh reason being is because they can always punish you with a giant balloon or a giant freeze in the opposite lane once you drop that golem or even once you drop that pump so it's going to be a tricky matchup and I have a bad starting hand so that's why I really want to show you guys this replay plus this guy you know uh I believe from Orient Esports is a really good 20 win player as well so you know it, he definitely has the skill there and you can see I'm ready with my hog emotes by the way guys uh, let me know in the comments, please, please, please give me feedback on this one, guys. Oh, by the way, let me let me pause it while I tell while I tell you guys this, right? Please give me feedback. I'm thinking about doing the top five like best BM decks as kind of a spoof joke video, starring like King Zhao, who's like the biggest, baddest, most notorious BMer in the world. Do you guys think that would be funny, like with all the e new emotes, or do you think it would just be stupid and cheesy? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. So here we go, guys. I have a really, really unorthodox push going on right here. I decided to go ahead. I wish there was a rewind button, by the way. But because I knew I had such a big elixir advantage, because he started out cycling something. I forgot what it was. Uh, Skel Skarmy. He cycled a Skarmy behind his King Tower. And then he threw away minions against my Night Witch. So I'm thinking, wait, that's already six elixir that he's used. I can essentially just drop an 8 Elixir Golem. I already have the Night Witch, and I don't think he's going to be able to defend this push. So it's one of those very rare situations. Because he cycled uh, 6 Elixir worth of cards, I decided to just go ahead and go in here on this push. And luckily for me, uh, well, actually, not luckily for me, the Night Witch dies, but I am still able to get a lot of damage here. I'm able to poison. I also zap. That poison came in handy here. And look at this. The death damage of the Golem is going to go ahead and take care of those minions anyway. He drops that that giant there and he drops the oops I think he thought that some of those minions would survive that golem death and I know at this point here I could drop like a mega minion if I wanted to but I want to take it easy I, there's no reason again with a golem deck the first thing that you guys need to know when you're switching over to a heavy beatdown deck especially if you're used to playing like a whatever deck you're used to normally playing is that you just have to be comfortable taking a lot of damage you just, you have to you know and because I didn't overcommit with a mega minion there against that giant I took about a thousand damage on that tower but now i have my mega minion to oh go against the balloon until he drops the freeze <laughs> i juked some of you guys out in fact he juked me out there too i thought for sure i had a nice easy defense with the baby dragon and the mega minion but now i know he has freeze and i can just pump up and hey i almost take the tower just on the counter push so i'm 
still feeling really, really good about this. I know at this point, look it, I have a one elixir advantage and then I have the pump. So really I'm ahead like three elixir minimum right now in this match. And we're going into double elixir time where I think my deck has the advantage. Generally the heavier decks do better in double elixir time. But I have to be ready for this big push. I knew he'd come at me with a, uh, a bunch of swarm. I thought it might be a Skarmy or, or who knows, minions. And I knew I was going to take a lot of damage. But I knew I could just rely on the baby dragon and all my support troops in the back because he doesn't have a big spell. He has, as soon as you see that freeze, 99% of freeze decks don't have a big spell. So after that, I was able to really just focus on supporting a big giant golem push here. And I actually even used even used my po my uh, poison, excuse me, in that right lane when I knew I kind of needed it in the left lane. Because remember, we have Zap, not Log in this deck. But I knew that he had nowhere near Elixir. And if I, enough Elixir to defend, excuse me. And if I went all in, there was no way I wasn't going to come away with a very demonstrative three crown. And that's exactly what happened here. Guys, I'll play another live match. But before I do, I do want to show you one more replay against the heaviest deck in the game. That's right, a deck that's even heavier than my deck. And it's this one played by Sub-Zero. I think this guy was a pretty good player, too. He is a 17-win uh, player, so just the same caliber as me, basically. We're both at 17 wins. Ah, oh, man, I wish there was a 20-win challenge, guys. But I kind of knew there wasn't going to be one. I said that in my, up my September update video. And a lot of people were like, I know there's going to be a uh a 20 win challenge but not the case but you can't complain about this 2v2 challenge just because of the rewards i think are the best that we've ever ever seen in the game have any of you guys finished the 2v2 challenge i haven't played yet i'm probably going to hold off and do so on stream today if you guys want to stop by i'll probably be going live about an hour after this video goes live so i'd love to see you guys there Anyway, guys, uh, it's going to be a golem, another early golem push from me here. And again, I just kind of want to walk you through this process. My thought process here is that they drop the pump, I drop the pump. So that's an even trade. And then they drop the, they cycle minions in the back there. So when they cycle the minions, I know I'm up three elixir at that point. And then the golem becomes a, it goes from an eight elixir investment that's really risky to just a five elixir investment, meaning that my opponent will only have five more elixir than me after I drop the golem. So it's a little bit less risky. I mean, look at his hand right here, guys. He has a five elixir advantage. You can see five point whatever, three, two elixir advantage. And what is he going to do to punish me? He could drop a goblin gang in the opposite lane, but that's fine because it just allows me to devote even more elixir to my golem push. It's kind of a tug of war when you're playing a beatdown deck, especially against another beatdown deck. Who has the elixir advantage? Who's going to devote more elixir to defending? Who's going to devote more elixir to cycling to another pump? Who's going to devote more elixir to try to punishing in the other lane? There's a few different elements kind of going on strategically uh, behind the scenes or kind of uh, beyond the arena that you guys want to kind of pay attention to. And, you know, this is why I showed you the entire match right here, guys. And I'm not I'm going to go ahead and just play in double time from here on out. But the reason is, is because when people see a golem deck, oftentimes if you, if they pump up, they're either playing three musketeers or a golem, you know, 90% of the time. So if they're playing three musketeers, you can kind of use your very first poison as sort of a surprise poison. And sometimes, oftentimes, just like that situation, you can capture tremendous value out of that circumstance because when they see the golem, they're going to think that you maybe have NATO. They're going to think that maybe you have lightning, but odds are you probably don't have a big spell. So oftentimes with a cheesy, corny, low skill cap deck like this, you can sneak in that poison there on the opponent and punish them in a situation like that. Now, after I go went ahead and poisoned the three musketeers there, guys, there was really nothing the opponent could do here, barring a huge misplay on my part. So I'm able to just defend here. I love this deck because you have the baby dragon and the mega minion and, of course, the night witch and poison. I'm just basically naming every card in the deck that can, car tar that can target and take care of air troops. He actually got a little tight there at the very end with his three musketeers at the bridge but i had a huge elixir advantage anyway and i'm sure i would have been able to finish off the right tower had he gotten close let's go ahead and play one more and see how we do here guys we're at 5300 trophies let's go ahead and hop into a ladder match against soda six all right soda let's see what you got here Ooh, again a really bad starting hand this is pretty much the worst starting hand that you guys can have in this deck unfortunately 
Uh, reason being is we don't have a small spell to cycle. We don't have Elixir Pump in our first five cards. Ideally, it's in your first four. If not, maybe your first five. In this situation, it looks like to be one of our last two cards. So going into a match, the downside in a deck like this is that... And what I could have done there, guys, by the way, I'm just going to drop a Golem. It's a risky play, but... I could have actually dropped that golem at the very beginning instead of the baby dragon, but I actually make a four for uh, three trades, giving my opponent the advantage there. I'm going to go ahead and just cannon cart in the back here. That will help out against the mini P.E.K.K.A. Now, I'm not trying to necessarily get a ton of damage on this push, guys. Obviously, the push is going to die out very soon. Uh, instead, I'm just trying to defend. I was defending with the golem there, and now he'll have to answer, of course, this cannon cart. I am going to go ahead and mega minion just to make sure that I kill this prince there, and he will have to respond to the mega minion minion as well so i'm not gonna zap this guys uh, my golem's getting a lot of damage i'd rather reset and and pump here i think a lot of people might have zapped there to try to get an extra hit or two with the mega minion me personally i would rather just try to play defensively and uh, save a little bit of elixir so he's actually going to go in with a miner a smart miner on his part and we're just going to go ahead and kind of ignore it unfortunately guys i i have a big elixir advantage despite even his miner here i was hoping the night witch would have helped out against that miner so what i'm going to do is just go in in the left lane knowing that he doesn't have giant in the cycle so he can't really punish me actually he can punish me with a prince in the right but that's about it so he has prince in hand Probably has a spell in hand. He has mini P.E.K.K.A. in hand. It's going to be a difficult matchup. Uh, what I'm going to do is I don't want to take a Charging Prince here. So I'm just going to go ahead and poison this all up. And uh, just play a Mega Minion on this uh, this right side. I'm probably going to lose my, my right tower here, guys. And that's okay. Uh, what I want to do is try to hopefully take his left tower in return. So I'm going to let that all go there. And let's see. He actually drops a very nice Prince there. So this one is not looking so hot for me, guys. With only 35 seconds left. I almost have to drop a... Uh, okay. I almost have to drop a Cannon Car over here. All right, so actually, 23 seconds left. I, I, my, my poison, of course, does 240 damage. I'm going to have to poison here, guys, and hope for the best. Okay, Cannon does get a hit on that tower, but, you know, guys, we're just going to have to go all in here, and hopefully we can just pull off a miracle. He can giant me, and I think he's trying to do that. He's going to try to do that, I should say. And there's the giant. Uh, the cannon cart actually pulls that giant, guys. He has his mega minion down. I am just going to go pile up here and hope for the best. No, no, no. Get to the tower, guys. Come on, man. Come on. No, we don't pull it off there, guys. Unfortunately, my mega minion and my uh, baby dragon went to the giant. We'll give him a well played there. I think in hindsight, I could have won that. Had I dropped the baby dragon and the mega minion instead of the pocket, if I had dropped them in the lane instead. And that's something that you guys, you know, maybe you can take from this video. Is that in that circumstance, his giant going back towards my half-dead cannon cart, it actually pulled that giant away from the lane, causing the troops that I was trying to kind of put the pressure on in the pocket there, the mega minion and the baby dragon, to get pulled back in on defense. Of course, in hindsight being 2020, I could have either defended the giant or I could have went in the right lane. So guys, hopefully you learned from my mistake. Of course, with this channel, never afraid to show losses. I think that it helps you guys out too, and it gives you something to think about like that last loss. So guys, I hope you enjoy this deck. It's really fun, and it will teach you the fundamentals of beatdown in kind of a low-skill environment, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing to do sometimes if you don't consider yourself a pro player like yours truly. So guys, huge, huge shout-out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below, along with the deck link in my player profile, thanks to StatsTroyal.com. Don't forget about the Twitter and the Discord giveaways, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.